Assalamu alaikum everyone. Did you know that the first Muslim politician in France was a revert? Stay with us and inshallah we have an amazing story for you today. But before we get into the video, I would like to talk about QTOR, used by thousands of students around the world to study Quran online. You can learn Tajweed, Hafiz and Arabic. In one-on-one -on -one classes with Quran tutors you select. Make sure to download this useful app and start your free trial today. The link in the description below. And with that, let's get into the video. So, over the years, as we all know, Islam has experienced rapid growth in European countries such as France. In fact, with over 5.5 million followers to its name, Islam is the second most professed religion in France. And these numbers are only mooted to rise, inshallah. However, there was a time in the late 19th century when Islam was practically absent from the streets of the country and no one, let alone a politician, could think of joining the folds of this religion. Today, we're going to talk about a brave Frenchman named Philippe Grenier who, regardless of the unfavourable circumstances, underwent an inspiring journey towards Allah and his religion and became the first ever Muslim politician in French history. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and shed some light on his inspiring venture. Born in Pontarlier in 1865, Philippe Grenier studied medicine in Paris and was initially a doctor by profession. When he came back home in 1889, he was so overwhelmed by the conditions of the poor and disadvantaged people in France that he began to offer them his free consultations and even free medications. That is why he was frequently called the doctor of the poor. Moving on, so after kickstarting his professional career, in 1890, Philippe went to visit his brother in Blida, a city in Algeria, the place where he first came into contact with Islam. In Blida, he was devastated by the poverty of the Muslims living there. So he decided to instate himself among them to study the Quran. Four years later, in 1894, he visited Blida the second time. This time around, however, he proclaimed the oneness of Allah and belief in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, therefore reverting to Islam. Soon after his conversion, Philip performed the Hajj pilgrimage before returning to his home country and resuming his career in medicine. Brother Philip was now a reformed man, often seen attired in Barnos, Gandora and Turban. His rank among the community quickly rose and with persuasion from his fellow citizens, he decided to try his luck in politics with an aim to defend the Muslims of the colonies and the underprivileged French. Later that year, he ran for the seat of municipal councillor in the 1896 elections, campaigning on public health issues and public assistance. As he started to gain publicity, he was inevitably ridiculed by his opponents for his outfits. Despite all the jokes, he was able to ace the 1896 elections by securing 51% of votes against his competitor. He became a member of the Chamber of Deputies for Dupes, the first French Muslim politician to have ever achieved that feat. If Islamic history teaches us anything, it is that Allah chooses to test his favourite man by having them go through different phases of difficulty. It is pretty clear from Philip's example that if one is able to bear these limited times of difficulty with steadfastness, then Allah surely rises him to glory. And if you do a bit of digging, you will find that there are numerous examples of such men in Islamic history. The Holy Prophet himself was the best embodiment of endurance and firm faith. Despite being mocked and rejected by his own people, he did not lose hope. And as we all know, the rest is history. Anyway, coming back to the French politician under discussion, as his career as a French parliamentarian began, the person of ridiculous judgments on his lifestyle by his political rivals began along with it. He was mocked for his appearance and was accused of bathing naked in rivers, of owning a harem, of striking his head on rugs while praying, 
and even of declaring himself as a prophet. However, he didn't allow this unconstructive criticism to stop him from implementing the principles for which he came to politics in the first place. Since he aspired to improve the conditions of the Muslim community, he would often go on short trips to Algeria in order to conduct parliamentary inquiries. In his home country, France, he made public health and cleanliness his priority and also made efforts against alcohol. That is just the reason why scores of intellectuals, politicians and unbiased newspapers credited him as an extraordinary speaker with expertise in various subjects. Furthermore, he wrote several proposals for laws on reducing drinking establishments and increasing taxes, declaring alcohol as being homicidal to the poor and depressed. Unfortunately, those proposals were rejected by his own people, largely because the country's economy was dependent on alcohol. Due to his stance against drinking, alcohol in particular, he suffered defeats in the elections of both 1898 and 1902. Such was his mental strength that instead of mourning his defeats, he decided to retire from politics and devote himself to the servitude of humanity. Up until he died in 1944, he continued to treat the sick, doing it free of cost for the most deprived ones. He would also provide them with food and clothes. Philippe's efforts, especially in terms of giving the Muslim community a voice, were certainly not in vain. Today, even though France is undergoing its worst wave of Islamophobia in recent times, with Muslims getting all the blame for the terrorism in the country. They know how to defend themselves against these baseless accusations. Moreover, the Muslims of France now have their own political party called the Union of French Muslim Democrats, and they are a force to be reckoned with. As a tribute to his services to the poor, destitute, and the Muslim community in general, various mosques and Muslim educational institutions bear Philippe Grenier's name, the most prominent of which is the Mosque of Pontarlier. In short, Philippe's tireless endeavours for his fellow Muslims during his lifetime have made them remember him even after his death. May Allah accept his efforts and grant him Jannatul Firdaus. Thank you brothers and sisters for watching. I hope you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and support us on Patreon. You can find the link in the description below. See you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.